Hey guys, uh, we're going to work with that digital elevation data that we just downloaded from uh, the National Elevation data set. Um, just going to turn it into a hillshade and uh, use that as our cartographic back backdrop for some thematic data maybe. So here's our, again, slightly disturbing cube that appears to have no data in it, but this is our uh, digital elevation model for the area of Montpelier. I'm just going to symbolize it a little bit differently this time uh, in black and white so that you can see what else can be done with this. Uh, the first bit is to let QGIS figure out what the entire statistics of the data set are, because right now it's just sort of estimating what the minimum and maximum uh, elevations are within this, and as a result it's not showing any, any variation. So by calculating the actual min-max values from the band, hit actual and then hit load, it came up with minimum 55, maximum 1,338. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is meters. It includes the highest point in the state of Vermont and one of the lower ones. Um, then in order to see what that looks like, you go to uh, stretch the data. This, as it says, it enhances the contrast. Uh, just stretch it to the minimum and maximum values. Uh, then hit OK. Give it a second. And there is our digital elevation model in black and white this time. By using pseudo color before, we had turned it into a um, sort of a you know multicolored version of the same thing that we're looking at here. So the hillshade option is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, we're going to go to raster and analysis, and then it's actually buried without the word hillshade under DEM terrain models uh, within raster and analysis tools. Uh, however, once that menu comes up, you can see that the hillshade mode is one of the many options we have here, and it's the, the default option. So we're going to, you can see the uh, input raster is already there, it's already specified. I'm just going to select a new location for it. Um, I will call this Montpelier Hillshade 2, uh, and it's important to specify what type of file this is going to be. There's no real uh, the drop-down dialog works for this, but it's easier to just say I want this to be a TIFF file. So I'm going to say .tif. That'll be a TIFF file. It's a pretty standard interoperable format. It's always going to work with QGIS. Uh, we'll always have uh, good georeferencing attached to it. So I'm going to go with that. Hit save. You'll definitely want to hit compute edges. This prevents the um, prevents the algorithm from having trouble along the boundaries here where uh, maybe it can't quite figure out what the what sort of shadows the sun would be casting if the data abruptly ends. So if you hit compute edges, it takes care of that. Load into Canvas when finished, then hit OK, and let that run for a little while. Might take uh, up to a couple of minutes. OK, you can see our processing is completed, and the layer was added automatically. And there is our hillshade data. Uh, you can see it's a little bit pixelated from this far back out, but let's zoom in, and yeah, indeed, this is the mountainous area of Vermont. You can see a little flat area. It's a reservoir near Waterbury. Um, there are a couple of things we would do with this to make it more cartographically pleasing, because you can see the um, the defaults are pretty stark. They're, the contrast is great. Um, basically, the simplest thing you can do is increase the transparency before you lay any data on top of this. So let's say... 50% transparent, hit OK, and you can see it mutes the colors a lot more. And just so you can see how you might combine this with a thematic layer, I'm going to add a, uh, a state land cover layer for Vermont. Uh, this is a very coarse resolution data set. It's uh, you know, probably not the best cartographic choice, but hey there, it's completely black anyway. we got to change the symbology. Uh, this is a categorical data set instead of a continuous one. Um, the distinction there being just that each, uh, each category is discrete. It's not a continuum of elevation or um, illumination by the sun. It's a set of categories like forest and field and urban. Um, so the easiest way to do this is just, again, apply pseudo color and it'll give it some default colors. And you can see they're not, you know, the most pleasing ever, but we'll just go with them for the sake of expediency. Um, then set the transparency maybe closer to, uh, yeah, say, 35%. Hit OK. And you can see the hillshade is coming through. Uh, there's a 
certain amount of uh, thematic detail there. Um, we'll check out a you know fairly detailed area here, and yeah, this is again you you'll want to change the overlay colors for something like this uh, to something maybe more intuitive, like um, a you know a, a dark green for the forest and maybe a, a lighter green for the for the fields or a yellow almost for the fields, maybe a black for urban or a dark blue, but um, this is just a way of getting started with using hillshade data as a cartographic backdrop. 